Welcome to episode three of E Does Not Equal MC Squared, a guide to sustainable investing for renewable energy. My name is Margaret Kulin, and I'll be one of your hosts. And my name is Ignacy Yurievich, and I'll be your other host. Today, we'll be talking about another form of renewable energy, wind energy. Wind energy has a long and rich history and is often the main feature in graphics about renewable energy. It's easily recognized and widely used as the poster child for a greener energy future. When I think of wind energy, I imagine these giant wind, white wind farms that are often found in rural areas. Has wind energy always looked like this? And will it always look like this? So wind energy is one of the oldest forms of energy, dating back to as early as the 11th century, when farmers used windmills to pump water for their crops. Throughout history, people have harnessed the wind to assist them with everyday tasks and provide power to their homes. Think of those old Dutch windmills used to grind grain. They're essentially wooden planks that slowly move with the wind. The wind farms you see today are similar to these early windmills, but are much more efficient and have a larger production cap capacity due to the immense amount of research and development investing over the years. Wind energy was widely popular on American farms, where the power of the wind would help farmers keep up with the technologies found in cities. However, wind energy use in the U.S. declined in the 1930s after the government extended power lines to bring energy to farms in the Midwest. However, when oil reserves got smaller in the 70s, the U.S. government looked for other sources of renewable energy. Wind energy farms became quite popular as a form of renewable energy and can be found in many rural parts of the United States today. So what makes, what makes wind power so popular? Wind power is one of the cheapest options on the market currently, plus it requires little maintenance and leaves the ground around it arable. The base of a wind turbine is at most 300 feet in diameter, which leaves lots of room for farmers to continue using it. Because, it's been, because wind energy power has been around for so long, the technology is very advanced and is continually improved upon. Additionally, it helps individuals who want to save money on their electric bill and provides jobs to surrounding communities. In 2016 alone, wind power construction, maintenance, and research provided the U.S. with over 100,000 new jobs. Wow, I mean, that sounds great, but there must be drawbacks, otherwise we would just use wind energy for all of, for all of our energy we need, right? Yeah, so wind energy isn't always predictable, and it's not always present for energy generation. While technology has allowed turbines to automatically shift towards the wind, prevailing winds shift over time, which may render an entire wind farm useless. Additionally, wind farms disrupt the natural scenery and cause harm to wildlife. On average, almost 450,000 birds and bats are killed each year by wind farms. And finally, due to the nature of turbines themselves, windmills will never be 100% efficient. Think about it, for the turbine to spin, some wind must go through the turbine. This means that not all of the wind can be turned into energy. Albert Betts, an early 20th century physicist, found that a turbine can only harvest up to 59.3% of the wind's energy. This 59.3% is known as Betts's limit and drives a lot of the research and innovation as engineers strive for this number. Because wind farms are, aren't always producing at their capacity, communities that depend on wind energy also need backup energy sources, many of which are non-renewable. So even if a town or city uses wind energy, they rely on coal or oil to provide energy when the windmills can't. However, Compared to other forms of renewable energy, wind energy is pretty reliable and technologically advanced. And finally, it's easy to invest in. Perhaps that's why a lot of countries have already begun investing in the technology. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, countries around the world invested almost 250 billion US dollars in renewable energy in 2016, with about half of that money going towards wind farm construction and research and development for windmill technology. And arguably, this research and development money has gone a long way. According to the European Wind Association, the global production capacity of wind energy has roughly doubled every three years since the year 2000. In 2018, 
Countries around the world produce not 591 gigawatts of energy from wind farms alone. This is the largest production capacity for renewable energy sources, followed by 508 gigawatts produced by solar panels. Additionally, wind farms have the ability to move offshore now. This is a recent technological innovation. This, this would solve the issue of disrupting the natural scenery. Um, and it also allows for uninterrupted airflow from buildings or the surrounding mountains. So how do companies, governments, and individuals get involved? Should they invest in specific technologies, like the offshore wind farms you just mentioned? Because wind technology is constantly changing and improving, investing in specific technologies may not be the smartest investment. For example, from 2010 to 2011 alone, engineers found that by increasing the height of a wind turbine and making the blades longer, they could capture more energy. This means that if you invested in companies making the smaller turbines, you would not see a great return on your investment, as the smaller turbines are in less demand by wind farm constructors. Then you see another shift in windmill technology. In 2018, uh, engineers found that large, bulky turbines, which were popular in 2011, were actually not as efficient as a new, small, and light turbine, with an emphasis on the lighter blades. Since the average investor is not an expert in wind power technology, it may seem hard to figure out a place to put your money. But luckily, the market is dominated by three major companies, General Electric, Siemens, and Vesta's Wind Systems. If you're familiar with the energy market, you've probably heard of the first two. But the third company, Vesta's Wind Systems, specializes in researching and selling wind energy technology. So if you're just looking for stocks to add to your portfolio, these three companies are great options, with Vesta's being the best if you're looking to invest uh, specifically in wind technology. However, there are other ways for companies to get involved. You can own a share of actual wind farms through yield codes which pay dividends to investors from the cash flow generated. The two largest yield codes are Pattern Energy and Terraform Power. An investor signs a long-term contract, usually 14 years, with these yield codes and receives dividends based on each farm's performance. So both of these investments are sound because, as I said before, unless the prevailing winds change drastically, the wind farms will produce a reliable amount of energy with little maintenance. But I think the, the greatest opportunity for growth is in the personal sector. I think a lot of people know about personal solar panel use, but recently personal wind energy systems have come on the market. These are efficient, fairly small, and provide a lot of benefits to the owner. Not only does it supply power for personal use, but many states offer energy credits through net metering laws. So if a household produces more energy than it consumes, that extra energy counts as a credit towards their next power bill. This allows for more available household spending, which goes into the economy as households spend their money on food, retail items, or larger investments, instead of on their utility bill. At this point, I think there's just the societal barrier to overcome. Yeah, you mentioned that many individuals find the windmills ugly and disruptive. How will the wind energy market overcome that? I think it's definitely going to be tough. Um, wind, wind turbines are pretty much a symbol at this point. Um, when you see an ad for renewable energy, there's always that shot of turbines spinning slowly in a picturesque field. Um, so their very image looks slow and backwards in a rapidly changing and uh, technology-driven society. However, I think when people see the opportunity for personal savings, as well as an opportunity for investment in yield codes or the companies themselves, they'll hop on. Um, there's definitely, there's no telling where the future of wind energy will go, um, considering its rapidly changing design and dependency on, on the wind patterns throughout the world, but it's no doubt that it's a step in the right direction towards a greener future. Um, thanks so much for listening. I know next, Ignasi, you're going to introduce geothermal energy, which is another form of renewable energy.